you've been incredibly successful with your advocacy in Texas on coal burning power plants and I want to pause on that for a moment uh, because as the slide indicates and these are from um, public citizen. But these are some slides uh, from some Texan sources that I thought would be of interest to you if you'd not seen them. There still are another half dozen coal burning power plants that are proposed um, in, in Texas um, and another half dozen that are un under construction and being appealed or uh, per permitted and under construction. So there are a lot of opportunities for advocacy around coal. So. Uh, why do we care about coal? There are two main reasons. One is uh, coal, of course, burning coal, that's a potent greenhouse gas, a lot of carbon emissions. When we get increased temperatures, um, you get increased ground level ozone. Because the main health effects um, that we worry about, again, are ozone, for one, because that um, both worsens and actually causes asthma. Um, and uh, we had dinner last night with uh, Ron Anderson, the president of Parkland, and he talked about how on ozone non-attainment days that this was a huge issue here in Dallas, of course, as it is everywhere on ozone non-attainment days. And the other issue is mercury from coal burning power plants. And power plants just, um, are responsible for 40% of total mercury emissions in the United States. And there are, this one I'll have to read, 329,784 acres of lakes in Texas where you're not supposed to fish um, because of the risks of mercury contamination. So those are some of the other kinds of issues. I want to circle back around to eating healthily as a public service for my main focus, but I want to break it down into the why and the who and the what. So the first part is the why, and again, a lot of you are pretty familiar with this. Um, this is going to be the piece where I want to summarize some of the concerns around global warming, especially around global warming and health. A simple intervention like walking to school is a climate change intervention, an obesity intervention, a diabetes intervention. So what Howie's quote here says is that we should think about the implications of all of our actions. And there are already 25 million uh, global warming and environmental refugees um, from, from climate change and from things like drought and environmental toxins. So this is what the global picture looks like in terms of emissions by country. Um, and you can see that you know, the perpetrators, as usual, are in the north and the victims, as usual, are in the south. Um, and same thing, you can see that the deaths um, these are the folks who are now suffering um, already from, from climate change. Um, it totals already estimated 150,000 deaths per year. Let me circle back around to this other specific issue that I wanted to talk to, to you all about, which is about food choices and global warming, because this is an area, unlike energy conservation and some other personal choice areas, that uh, isn't quite as familiar to a lot of folks, and that I, as a specialist in preventive medicine, as a physician, um, and as someone who um, clinically has worked with patients with high cholesterol, feel especially comfortable in talking about. So the who of this is obvious. So the what part is the bottom line, if you have to remember one thing, it's eating lower on the food chain. Gas emissions, about 18% of total greenhouse gas emissions come from livestock. Total agricultural greenhouse gas emissions are 22%. But 18% of the greenhouse gas emissions um, in the world are from meat. Average American is responsible for three tons of cow poop per year. Cows, because of their unique digestive systems, they and other ruminants, but I don't know about you, but I don't eat a lot of camel, um, so um, that they produce an awful lot of CO2 and methane. Remember, methane is an extremely potent greenhouse gas, so we really need to be concerned about that. The American Heart Association, American Cancer Society, both recommend that folks get most of our foods from plant sources 
sources and that we limit our intake of high fat foods especially from animal sources. This doesn't make sense. We need to make smarter choices about our energy consumption but in the interim we need to take this into account when we make choices about our food consumption. I think that there will come a point where we think about combating global warming with the same seriousness um, that we've thought about other wars that we need to wage. Um, so in conclusion, um, eating healthily is a public service. It's one of the things that you can do several times a day, um, both eating low on the food chain, and I didn't even talk about eating locally, but certainly that's one of the reasons why um, agriculture is such a big contributor to greenhouse gases.